Hey YouTube, today I'm going to talk to you about a new version of an app from one of my favorite app makers on the Mac, uh, Rogue Amoeba. They just released an updated version of SoundSource. So previously, I believe they were selling or giving away SoundSource for free, the previous version. I could be wrong there, don't quote me on that. Um, I know at one point it was free. They've since now made a full version that improved it in a bunch of different ways that I think more than justifies, I believe, the $29 yeah, $29 US price for it. And so I think it's worth checking out if you do any amount of configuring and fiddling with audio levels on your Mac. You don't have to be a podcaster or an audio nerd to want this. I think this is a really smart play by Rogue Amoeba with an app that will appeal to audio folks and Mac users in general. Right out of the gate, I just want to say you don't even need to watch the rest of this video to know whether you want to use it because they've got a free download, a trial version that uh, you can test out on your machine and see if you like it or not before you have to buy it. The limitations of the trial version are that the audio quality will start to degrade after 20 minutes, which is um, something they use on a lot of their apps actually for allowing you to test things out, but obviously limiting it until you buy it, um, which I think is a smart way of, of letting folks play around with their apps, see how they work, see what the UI is like, see what the quality is like, and then drop down the money to actually buy the full version. So one of their marketing taglines is sound control so good it ought to be built in, which I tend to agree with. They list three reasons why you'd want to buy it. Fast access to system devices, per application audio controls, and audio effects for any app. And so I'm going to cover a little more detail with the actual app itself uh, and how that works. So once you've got SoundSource installed, it looks just like this. It's a menu bar item and it expands like so and shows you a whole bunch of audio controls. And the first thing you need to know is it's a menu bar app and so it goes away if you switch away to anything else. It's not a, an app that stays in your dock, it's only in the menu bar. And so if you would like to keep it active and floating above everything else, there's a pin here. So then you can actually move it around and drag it around. So I'm gonna do that for now, just so that I can keep track of where it is with uh, screen recording software here. And on that note of screen recording, you'll notice that right away the output here is set to Telestream audio capture. That's because I'm using this to record uh, with ScreenFlow, a Mac app for screencasts and screen recording. That's why the default system output is set to that so that all the audio that my system makes is being recorded by ScreenFlow so I can use it and you can watch it and hear it later. So normally this would probably be set by default to your internal speakers if you're on a Mac, iMac, MacBook Pro, etc. Besides accessing it with the menu bar and then pinning it, if you didn't have that set up as well, you can go into preferences and you can actually set up a, a global hotkey. And so I've set mine to be shift command S, but if you just click here, you can hold down the key command you want, shift command S, and then it's locked in and that's why, how it'll appear. So if I unpin this now and it goes away, shift command S and it'll pop open. Just remember that whatever shortcut key key you set there um, could either conflict with another app that already has that set um, or and I actually haven't tested a lot yet with <laughs> that shortcut key to know what other apps I might be overriding their shortcut keys for uh, but just if all of a sudden two things are happening at once when you hit that that's probably why you might need to pick a different key combination so prior to the more most recent versions of Mac OS, when you click the menu bar here, you didn't actually see any of the output devices that was all hidden away. And all you had was the menu, or sorry, all you had was the volume. And that was the only control you had. If you hit the option key and the volume control, then you could see the output and the internal input devices, sorry. Um, but again, that's, that's what you were limited to. So that's where SoundSource is a nice step up from that. So I can still do that with SoundSource here where I, like I showed you before, I can choose the output to be my, by default, which is probably in, internal speakers, um, but I could also choose any of the other audio devices, some of which I've created by using uh, another Rogue Amoeba app called Loopback. And I won't cover that in great detail right now, but suffice to say, that's where some of these, if you see some weird devices in my listing, that's because I've got new audio devices created inside of Loopback. And someday I will make a video on Loopback. I just haven't got around to it yet. So give me a thumbs up or a comment below if you'd like to hear more about Loopback. So basically you can think of SoundSource's primary purpose here is to decide where you want audio to go and where you want audio coming into your computer to be coming from. So that's the first option is your output, obviously, like I said, is where you want it to go. And then your input to your computer is what device you want to be using as the input for audio into your computer. So I could choose a different input device, either hardware like internal microphone or the camera microphone that's on my USB webcam or a software audio um, 
device that I created in loopback could be also an input device. One really handy thing you can do with SoundSource is choose where you want all your Mac audio sound effects to come out of. So often um, I might be editing a podcast, let's say, and using my Scarlett USB device is my primary output device normally, but I want maybe my, you know, the male swoosh sound or dings and whatever noises that the computer might be making. I don't want to hear them in my headphones maybe. I want them just to keep coming from the internal speakers. So I could choose to do that. And then any noises the computer makes will be coming out of there. That those alarms and alerts, not music from that's where output would still be um, you know, say if you're playing iTunes or Spotify on your computer, things like that, webcam or um a web browser is playing a video that would still be tracking with the output here, but your sound effects that your computer makes alerts, things like that are what would be set with the sound effect tab. And here also you can turn those down if you want and turn them up. That's what's kind of handy is rather than having it all set by one master output level, you can actually turn down just the sound effects here. You can see the levels that they're at here. And then also you can mute just by clicking on the speaker or I don't click it on again to unmute it. So the really killer feature I think for SoundSource is the per application uh, adjustments that you can make. So you can see that it comes pre-populated with apps that it, they think you might wanna use to control volume. Obviously iTunes, VLC is a, a media player, Spotify player, Firefox browser, Chrome and Safari, those browsers. But you can also add any other app that's on your computer that they might not have thought of. And on a per app basis, you can of course, like I said, mute, you can adjust the volume level output of it. There's a magic boost, which we'll cover in a second. There's the uh, the meter to let you know how loud a system is, or a, an app is. So that can be handy for trying to track down if there's music or sound playing somewhere on your computer, you're not sure where, you can just pop open SoundSource. It'll show you everything that's making noise in your computer and figure out what where it's coming from. There's also, of course, where you want the audio to go to. So again, by default, these are all set to track your system output. So again, um, my system output might be my USB headphones through my um, USB, my Scarlett USB device, let's say normally, but I could maybe want iTunes. If I had speakers hooked up to my computer's output, I could have that where it would be like my internal speakers or maybe routed to some external speakers. Um, or I could maybe have a different set of headphones that I've plugged in there, or maybe, um, any other device basically there where I want to send iTunes music through instead of the following the system output. And then also there's an equalizer, EQ, and effects that you can add on a per application basis. Finally, you can also add apps that are actually running right now. So it'll give you a list, or you can just go into your application browser if it hasn't found one, bring that over here, and find any other app that's installed on your Mac. And so, for example, I use Isotope's RX7 Audio Suite, editor suite for editing podcasts sometimes and cleaning up audio. Maybe I want that to be routed somewhere else to my master, you know, big speakers that I don't actually have right now. But <laughs> instead of my headphones, maybe I just want those that to always go there so I can hear loud uh, and in detail what's going on in some audio that I'm trying to fix up. So just to show how this might work, I'm going to add, I've got Farago, which happens to be another <laughs> Rogue Amoeba app. This is not sponsored by Rogue Amoeba. <laughs> I'll fire up Farago here. So I've got, um, let's say this downbeat loop is one of the samples that comes with the, the app. So I'm going to bring the volume down, you can see, and obviously right in the levels, you can see that it's where it's louder or quieter. mute it right away if I want to. And then magic boost is where it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a compression. So uh, they don't explicitly say it's compression. So I don't know if it actually technically is or not, but basically it's, it's basically levels things out. So listens ahead for quiet audio and tries to boost that so that all the audio will sound good together. Probably not as good if you're an audio nerd or music nerd anyways, and wanting to actually hear the music the way it was intended to be, the way the artist recorded it with, you know, really quiet, soft parts and really loud parts or whatever, um, you know, your death metal bands or whatever <laughs> might not sound as good with that on, but especially for podcasts, spoken word, maybe even this YouTube video, you could be playing through Spotify or through uh, Safari and have that boosted. And if my volumes aren't quite loud enough for you. And so as like everything else, you can track changes at the output if you didn't want it to go where it's currently going. Um, and then also adding a EQ to it. So they come with some uh, preset, presets that might work for you. A handy one if you've got AirPods. Unfortunately, I'm one of the uh, few Apple nerds that does not have AirPods yet. So hang my head in shame, but at least I don't have AirPods falling out of my ears while I do that. <laughs> but yeah, you can change the EQ, 10 band EQ, so you can play with it yourself. Um, let's 
base reducer, let's say. And then anything else, of course, you can also, if I adjust the EQs here for whatever reason, like this kind of setting, I can save that preset as a preset and name it as such. And then now it's in a custom preset there for me. And I can also delete it because demo preset is not really that helpful. And then besides the built-in effects, EQs, etc., you can also add in effects. So anything from Apple, distortions, delays, etc., pitch changers. One that could come in handy if you're listening to a podcast that's like maybe not, hasn't been edited very well and audio is a bit, has some issues, is um, you might not have um, RX-7, which is Isotopes, like I was saying before, their audio cleanup app that I use, but you could have something, it might have something else like it if it's really, um, really high. Um, EQ'd really high or EQ'd really low and you want to get trying to get rid of some of the EQ even more than what the 10 band EQ is or maybe it's really quiet and you want to add some um, add a compressor you could put a compressor on it, it gives you a little e, e, uh, gives you a little UI to adjust it make it louder if you want to um, I'm not going to cover exactly in great detail there but suffice to say you could add things like that in delay if you wanted for some reason maybe you want to change the pitch because it's really high, really low. So you can see. So obviously that's not changing the original audio file. It's just running it through sound source and that way I can hear it differently. So as soon as I get rid of that, it's gone. Isotopes, I'll just say, um, this probably isn't the best one to demo this on, but um, I could be running Maybe if it's a, a podcast, I can use their voice denoise to actually clean up the audio as I'm listening to it. Um, I don't need to go in and like permanently edit the audio, which I could do as well, the audio file, the MP3. But I could actually, if there's a lot of clipping or clicking or, or plosives, hard Ps, that kind of thing, I could be doing that live while I'm listening to it just uh, to save my ears and enjoy the podcast a little more. And then send the podcast editor over to lemonproductions.ca and say, hey, maybe you should hire this guy or he can give you some help getting the podcast sounding better so I don't have to do that. <laughs> just a little plug there. So besides adding an app, I can also remove an app. So let's say I never want to use Spotify. I can just remove that. And maybe um, just to show you here, I can demo in iTunes. I can start playing a podcast. So I'm going to send that to my internal speakers or to my headphones. So you can see shows. coming out there. No trickery. And... Actually, I'll just do this to the internal speaker. So as before, I can EQ it differently if I didn't like the way I EQ'd that originally. And again, add any sort of voice denoise. So that's how you could set the app up basically to how you like it. And then, yeah, use it to control audio levels. I think it's really handy for applications where you've got maybe Safari is playing a, a bunch of different YouTube videos and you don't want to, or Firefox or whatever, and it's in the background, you don't want to keep going back to the app, to Safari to find the volume control for just that um, video maybe that's playing. Maybe it's just like some noise, atmospheric noise in the background or, or music that you're playing off of uh, YouTube, let's say in Safari, and you're using Firefox to actually browse the web somewhere else, um, or you've got some other spoken word playing in iTunes, and so that way you can kind of mix and match your volume levels right in one spot rather than like switching to iTunes to lower the volume and then over to Firefox to raise the volume for the YouTube video, etc. cetera. Um, kind of makes it kind of nice and easy in one spot to manage all the volume for your Mac. Finally, they're very keyboard uh, shortcut friendly at, there at Rogue Amoeba, and so uh, sound source is no different. So once it's activated, so again, if I've got the Command Shift S, and then I can actually tab through things and shift tab through devices. I can use the keyboard arrow keys to scroll up and down or activate the space bar to turn magic boost on or off and up and down through the various devices and click through things. Very uh, keyboard shortcut friendly, which is I always appreciate. Just tells you that they've done a lot to be a Mac friendly app. And then of course, command comma is one I always check for as to whether they can open preferences. And I'm glad to report that SoundSource does that, even though it's just a menu bar app, still supports that. Um, one thing you want to check while you're in preferences is make sure it should be on by default, but if you've got the app and you bought it, you might as well be using it. So have it start at login. So it's automatically there when you boot up your computer. Super volume keys are just like they said, something that allows you to, allows um, SoundSource to control your volume of your machine wherever you happen to be listening to. And so you'll notice that it, opens up the security preferences. This is a nice feature 
air quotes, nice feature that Apple's made to make things more secure um, and allow basically apps to control the uh, system in a greater level. And so what we have to do, if sound source is not in the list, which it is, but if it wasn't there, I'd have to just go add it, find it in the application list here. Sound source, where are you? So I can't spell on video, so I would add that, but it's already there. Click that. I'll go back to sound source, command shift S. And so then I kind of should be able to control volume no matter where I am with my volume keys, which is kind of handy because it often gets um, overridden or locked by uh, certain devices that you plug in maybe don't allow you to control the volume of your Mac um, with keyboard shortcuts, um, especially if it's output to like HDMI output or sometimes audio USB audio devices, that kind of thing, want you to use their own controls and this allows you to still use the keyboard shortcuts. So that's sound source. Hopefully that helps you decide or figure out whether it's good for you and whether you'd like to use it. Uh, like I said, I think at 29 bucks, it, it might seem like silly to buy something that replaces just this, the simple volume control app in your taskbar already or in your menu bar. But I think if you do any amount of audio listening and routing of audio, that kind of stuff on your Mac, it's well worth it. And it'll save you a lot of headache of trying to figure out where apps are, which apps are spamming you with audio and also giving you a little more finite controls over the audio on your Mac. As I said earlier in the video, please let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a loopback tutorial demo or any other kind of audio related Mac demo. Um, I'm open to covering anything. If you happen to see a Mac app that in my videos that you see and you're curious what that is, I'd love to know that you'd like to know about it and I can happily try and do a video for it and uh, be sure to do the thumbs up thing, subscribe and hit the bell and all that stuff that YouTube makes us jump through hoops to do in order to share videos with you. And of course, share it with your friends and feel free to watch one of the videos or subscribe on the little thingy on the screen there. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, following along and enjoy audio on your Mac. Have a great day.